Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techy. This is everything you need to know from AMD's 2021 Computex keynote. First off, there's great news for anyone who's unable to get a GPU right now. AMD's decided to make their new 5000 series APUs available to the DIY market. If they're made available in decent quantities, people currently shopping for a dedicated GPU could get this as a stopgap until the GPU market settles down. These won't provide dedicated GPU horsepower, but it'll certainly be better than Intel's integrated graphics and should suffice until you're able to get a GPU. These new APUs will be available in two flavors, the Ryzen 5700G and 5600G, and will go for $359 and $259 respectively. The 5700G will have 8 cores, 16 threads, with a max boost speed of 4.6 GHz and includes an integrated GPU with 8 compute units running at a max speed of 2100 MHz. The 5600G will have 6 cores, 12 threads, with a max boost speed of 4.4 GHz and includes a 7 compute unit GPU running at 1900 MHz. As previously mentioned, these two chips should beat Intel's integrated graphics across the table. And according to AMD, this includes in production tasks such as Blender and DaVinci Resolve. Moving right along to the GPU announcement, AMD is releasing Mobile 6000 series RDNA 2 graphics chips for laptops. There are currently three flavors, 6800M, 6700M, and 6600M. Rather than spout off the specs of these, I've got a graph on screen now displaying all the relevant information. The first noteworthy item with these is they've taken some liberties with the naming scheme here, similar to how NVIDIA does where the mobile variant absolutely does not match up with the desktop variant. In this instance, the 6800M is much more similar to the 6700 XT desktop card in regard to number of compute units. According to AMD's slides, they're expecting the 6800M to beat the RTX 3070 mobile outright while also being competitive with the RTX 3080 mobile. This is potentially great news depending on pricing of machines that are equipped with the 6800M. AMD said their target performance metric for the 6800M is 120 FPS or better at 1440p max settings and they showed off 10 games where the mobile chip achieved just that, with 4 of the games being more in the realm of eSports. Those titles saw anywhere from 254 FPS all the way up to 417 FPS. Also worth mentioning is AMD showed off that these chips get the upper hand over Nvidia if you happen to be without a wall outlet and on battery power alone. The 6800M is anywhere from 14% to 40% faster than the RTX 3080 Mobile in CSGO, Fortnite, Dirt 5, and Resident Evil Village if AMD's slides are to be believed. The 6600M devices are said to be shipping currently, while the 6800M is said to begin shipments in June. Unfortunately, the 6700M looks to be shipping soon, whatever that means. I'm anxious to see these devices in action and can't wait to view some third-party benchmarks once reviewers have the laptops in hand. Lastly, in regard to their Radeon-powered notebooks, they're starting what I would call a verification program. It's called AMD Advantage. In a nutshell, this just means laptops with this branding have been verified by AMD to meet their standards for the program. The criteria for AMD Advantage is as follows. AMD Ryzen 5000 CPU and a Radeon RX 6000 GPU. It must use both Smart Access memory and Smart Shift technologies. The screen must have a 144 Hz or higher refresh rate along with low latency and FreeSync Premium. Additionally, it must be an IPS or OLED panel. It must have at least one PCIe 3.0 NVMe SSD. Surface temps for the WASD keys must be less than 40C. And lastly, they said 10 hours of battery life for video playback is expected. Although that doesn't sound much like a standard, but more of a wish. Next up, AMD is finally releasing their DLSS competitor known as FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution. This is going to upscale games to a higher resolution with less of a performance hit than running at the resolution natively. This is an open standard and will work on devices other than just RDNA 2. As a matter of fact, AMD gave Nvidia a big slap in the face and showed it being used on a GTX 1060 where it improved gaming performance by 41% in the particular title being shown. There will be four quality levels to FSR. Ultra quality, quality, balanced, and performance. 
It's worth noting that the 41% increase on the GTX 1060 was running the ultra quality preset, meaning there was headroom for quite a bit more performance. They stated that with performance setting, they were seeing as much as two times performance uplift. The big question is what the final image looks like in each preset. DLSS looked like hot garbage in its first iteration, so hopefully AMD's done their homework and bring something great to market. We should know soon, as FSR is set to be released on the first supporting titles on June 22nd, and has already been adopted by more than 10 studios and game engines. Additionally, FSR will support ray tracing, which is likely where many high-end gamers will be implementing it. Although it's worth mentioning, it seems like AMD may be targeting the lower-end market more so than NVIDIA's DLSS. And this makes sense, because it will allow developers to push graphics further, knowing that the lower-end systems will still be capable of running the game thanks to FSR. This is also welcome news for anyone with an older GPU that's been unable to upgrade due to the global chip shortage. Last up on AMD's keynote was a new CPU technology. AMD is now implementing what they're calling 3D vCache. Ultimately, they're stacking 64 megabytes of cache on top of the dies in a current generation Ryzen CPU. Using a prototype 12 core 5900X, after stacking this additional SRAM, it netted them an average of 15% performance uplift over five games that were shown. It's worth mentioning that this 15% increase in FPS at 1080p was from the 3D stacked cache alone. This doesn't include any architectural changes nor any node shrinks. This tells us if the numbers are to be believed, we should be in for a real banger with Zen 4 next year. AMD is incorporating the stack without the use of solder bumps, and instead it uses a copper on copper connection, which is advantageous for several reasons. First, it's a third of the energy per signal. It also simplifies the solution as a whole, which means it's more cost effective, and it achieves better thermal performance. This isn't the first time we've seen stacking of chips, as Intel's done it in the past, but not in this manner. AMD's 3D vCache is capable of more than 2 terabytes per second of bandwidth, which is absolutely where you're seeing the performance uplift. That and the increased cache size, of course. Two other noteworthy items that I picked up on that Lisa said was that Zen 4 is currently on track to be released next year, which is fantastic news. Also, she mentioned that production using the 3D stacking will begin at the end of this year. This either means that they have a Ryzen 5000 refresh coming with stacked vCache, or they're using this on their Rembrandt APUs, or we're going to see Zen 4 much sooner in 2022 than initially anticipated. If I was going to guess, I don't think they would bother porting the vCache to Ryzen 5000. So it's more likely they're either going to use the stacked vCache in Rembrandt in Q1 of 2022, or Zen 4 is going into production at the end of this year. Fingers crossed for an early 2022 Zen 4 launch. And that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed this overview of AMD's keynote, please hit that like button and consider subscribing if you aren't already. Also, make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notified when our next video goes live. We appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one.